Welcome to the DHL Supply Chain Pricing Power Index update. I'm here with Andrew Cox. Andrew, what's the latest? Anthony, the freight frenzy that we've experienced for the last couple of weeks has left us as quickly as it came. So the carriers actually lost five points of the pricing power this week. It's not quite a balanced market. They still have a little bit of power, but with volumes and rejections plummeting quickly, we, we, we might see this thing snap back even further in the coming weeks. But let's look at volumes. So uh, this is, we've had nine days. This is as of yesterday, as the time of writing. Since the nine days, since the peak of volumes, we've seen it uh, drop nine, we've seen it drop 12%. And in the nine days leading up to that peak, we saw rise 11 percent so this is what I'm talking about when I say volumes are falling uh, as, as quickly as they rose we expected this to come a uh, consumer spending is way down some some people are saying it's down 30 percent or so you know 95 percent of the country is on shelter at home lockdowns much of the economy is shut down so these volumes are going to continue to plummet really the only things that we've talked about that are insulated are you know consumer packaged goods medical supplies and food and that's just not enough to keep the volumes that high th for this long Right, and this is something that you, you spoke to earlier on a few weeks ago, is that even though we're seeing a surge, it's not sustainable and it's not going to last very long. And so we're really seeing this kind of happen in real time here, especially with this near real time data. So it's interesting to see this, how that pull forward effect is going to really take this, how low is that going to take us all? Yeah, that's right. I mean, it, <clears throat> I've heard some people around the office expecting, you know, something around 9,000, uh, the OTVI to be around 9,000 here at the end of May, or at the end of April, excuse me. So I don't know if it'll go that low, but I do believe we'll see something in that normal range. Uh, if, if this trend continues, if we follow if we follow the trend downward as quickly as we rose, we could expect to see something in the 10.6, 10.7 range uh, next week, which will be where I would normally expect volumes to be at this time, uh, but we'll probably continue to fall after that. But on the capacity side, so the same, the same idea, we're a little bit closer to the peak. We're only four days since uh, the peak um, capacity tightness. We've fallen 16% in, in OTRI, and outbound in the, in the four days prior to the peak, we rose 5%. So you can see that capacity is retreating and loosening as quickly as it tightened uh, around the country. Right, and so some of the other factors with the capacity, right, are drivers even taking themselves out because maybe they have fears of, um, you know, contracting the coronavirus, right? So. Yeah, and that's something we have seen. I, I don't have any data to tell you whether these dr those drivers that had decided to stay off have gotten back on the road, but I can tell you that there's just much less freight than there was uh, you know, last week or the week before. That's why we're starting to see these, these uh, outbound tender rejection index fall uh, significantly in the past couple days. Andrew, I'm almost afraid to ask, but your outlook in the next few months here. Yeah, so we can go back to our graph here. I, if we have a three-month outlook, so what we're looking at uh, sometime mid-summer, late summer in, in July, I'm hoping by then that we have most of the economy open back up, and at that point we'll have normally, you know, some, something like a normal balanced market. I say somewhere between the, the 45 to 55 range, where we'll have strong volumes. We have retail activity starting to pick up. Hopefully, most of the manufacturing and industrial economy will be open up uh, and running. So I can hope for a balanced market here in about three months. Right, and so we can, as you mentioned, more and more business kind of coming online around that time frame. It's going to be interesting to see what the rollout's going to be, what uh, businesses kind of start to come back online first and foremost after we see all the essential businesses. Yeah, because we, we've spoken that there's also uh, different regions of the country that are much further along in their phases of the coronavirus battle. You know, something like New York is, is much further ahead than uh, some places like Florida or even Louisiana, uh, and some places haven't been hit that hard yet that may be hit later, later on. So uh, the whole country will hit at different timings. I'm hoping that in three months, we'll have most of the economy open back up. Awesome. Andrew, thank you so much. And where can people find more of your insights? Uh, so you can go to FreightWaves.com forward slash passport to find all of the passport research items. We, we write three, three or four reports a week. Uh, this one is one of the free ones, but we have many, uh, many incredible, really deep and insightful research from JP's team uh, on FreightWaves.com forward slash passport. Awesome. Andrew, thank you so much. Insightful as always. And that's going to do for this week's edition of the DHL Supply Chain Pricing Power Index update. Be sure to tune in next week to get all the latest from Andrew.